Hi everyone. Sorry, it took a long time to upload this video. Well, it's been a year since I started woodworking after my first popsicle stick PC case. So, I wanted to do a milestone project for my one year woodworking experience and hope it may encourage my fellow newbies. And here's what I got. It's not perfect, but I tried my best. If this is your first visit to my channel, I basically got into woodworking because people are nice here and they always give me good vibes to challenge new things. As there are so many steps to do and the video gets too long, I can't share all my findings like I usually do, but let's see how I made it. Okay, as usual, I started with cutting wood. I mainly used leftover wood from the past projects. I also jointed some wood but I needed to wait until the glue to dry before hand planing. So that was it for the day. And now hand planing. They were supposed to be S4S but they were as twisted as my personality and I needed to flatten them. Curry maple was so difficult to make it flat while mahogany was just okay as long as the chip breaker is set right. I also cut dowels that I'll use for doors later and use the self-made jig to get accuracy. I know it's stupid slow but I usually take one day to prepare most of wood before starting the actual project or it will be hard to keep good alignment when assembling all parts at the end. This is Sashimono inspired, so I made all dado fitting tenons and mortises for the base frame box. The tenon fabrication wasn't hard at all, but the mortises were just crazy. I mean to cut off the maple fibers were hard for me. I could've used the saw plane I made, but as the mortises don't go through the bolts, for safe, I chose chisel to cut them off. They took me forever to cut them out. I guess next thing I may buy can be an azebiki saw or mortise chisel. Then I cleaned the bottom of the dado by a router plane and refined the edges by chisels later. I learned enough about this process in the past projects. If you clean up the wall edge before the bottom, it sometimes causes a tear on the wall when cleaning the bottom. Then I assembled the inside box. Up to this point, I was already exhausted but everything went well including jointing balls. So I still had high motivation to keep it going. Moving on to the dovetails, though this is my first time legit dovetails. I was stupid enough that I didn't feel it was challenging. So to test my bolt flattening accuracy and marking accuracy, I marked both tails and pins on bolts rather than transferring the cutout tails to the other bolts for pins. Well, to be honest, I don't rate my skill, so I'm not afraid of making gaps at all but I just hope to find my tendency of errors by doing this. Anyways, the dovetail joint was where I most messed up during this project, but I found some tips for making dovetails, but it's too much info to fit in this video. So if you want me to make a video about what beginners should care about when making dovetails, please let me know in the comment. Here I made a groove for the backboard. Since it's cutting through, I used the saw plane and the router plane. Whenever you can use a saw, just use it. It makes things easier. Then I glued only the dovetail joints. 
The bottom and the inside box are just there to be sure of the alignment. Yeah, I finally got some more clamps. Next, I did Chidori Goshi Kumiko. This thickness plane jig is so useful, so I recommend you to make one especially if you are into Kumiko. One of my favorite things so far I made was this Chidori Goshi laptop stand, so I decided to include it in this project. For the detail of the mechanism and how to make it, I have already made the video so please check it if you are interested in it. One mistake I had here was, I trimmed the edge before the glue hardened enough, so it ended up creating a little gap around the outer line. Now doors. When you refine the end grain by a hand plane, putting a little water on the end grain makes things so much easier. And then I made a haunched tenons. This didn't take much of the time but so many small cuts repeatedly. I just made the shorter bows thinner than the longer ones, so I don't have to worry about chamfering the inside corners. Oh, and I used a spring pin as a door shaft. The neck part of the pin I got was tapered, and I didn't like to make a big gap between doors to the frame. I trimmed the edges by exacto knife to countersink it. I don't rely on these cheap pins, so I used hide glue to secure it. Now a drawer. It's just a box joint and poplar. So I actually did this when I was doing the dovetails. But this day was too hot and my phone stopped working due to overheating. California summer is evil. Anyways, I made it 130 seconds wider than the actual drawer insert, so I can adjust the size at the end by a hand plane. One thing I wanted to try at this project was making a drawer trimming like a sashimono style. I knew this mahogany is well dried and is super hard, but I tried to use a marking gauge, not a cutting gauge to cut off around the drawer face for putting a trim. It wasn't successful, so I ended up using chisels, but the marking gauge really helped me making the clean edges easily. And I used the 45 degree cutting jig for the miter part of the trim. I found this jig so handy. Then I just glued the pieces to the faceplate. It's actually my favorite part of the box now. It's almost done but now I got put magnets inside the door frame. I thought I didn't like this kind of tiny work. But I found I like doing this rather than making a big joint. After assembling all the frames and waited for one day, I put walnut oil. I don't like the smell of it, but I kind of like it. What can I say? It's similar to the fact you can bear with your own fart and sometimes even smile after the good ones. Here's the final product. I have to thank you guys again. Now I can make this kind of thing by myself. I hope this encourages my fellow beginners to try something challenging too. Well, I see lots of messes here and there as usual, but that is the reality of the newbie project. 
if every aspect of the project is a single project by itself, I think I could have done better, but when it comes to doing a lot of lot in one project, the consistency of the good fabrication is a key, and that is the difference between experienced people and the newbie like me. It's like I cut the dovetail like a pro yesterday. Doesn't guarantee I can do it without a chip today. So anyways, I need more experience. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I would be happy if you liked the video and happier if you subscribe to this channel. If you have any suggestion to my video, it's also welcome. See you!